outside, snowstorms, ice storms this week, you know, all kinds of wonderful spring weather that we're having. But, uh, uh, but it is spring, and so we're starting to get into some more spring kind of things. Like yesterday, our Good Hope had an, an awesome 5K and uh, was able to raise some money that'll uh, go to do a lot of good around the world. Uh, I actually was not there yesterday for the Good Hope 5K. I, I really wanted to be there, but before the dates had come out for that, uh, I had actually already signed up with someone else from the church here for a, a different race, and I uh, actually did a half marathon yesterday, and uh, yeah, I, I, I wish that I was at the 5K, trust me, about... I dedicated the first 5K of the half marathon to Good Hope, and, and, and I wish that I was just with Good Hope there because I was done at that point. Uh, I, had, I knew that I hadn't been running as much as I needed to recently, and, and I knew I was just going to have to slug it out. But the, the guy that I went with, he said, you know, he said it's, I heard that this is a flat course, so, you know, don't worry. It's going to be a piece of cake, you know, easy peasy. That was the hilliest 13.1 miles of my entire life. There wasn't a flat spot on there. I mean, he just flat out lied to me. <laughs> and what makes it worse is that he comes to church here. <laughs> and lied to his pastor, you know. And I won't tell you who it is, but, you know, might play the piano in the 830 service, you know. <laughs> There's actually supposed to be a membership induction in our next service. We're bringing 38 people into, into membership here at the church. And... I think it might actually only be 37 people because you can't have liars on the church membership rolls. But um, so if I'm moving a little slower today, you, you know why. It was it was a very hilly 13.1. But uh, now it's uh, great to be here. If you're new to the church, we're in the middle of a, a transition here. Pastor Tim, our our, our senior uh, pastor, is uh, trend. Getting ready to transition. His, the way he puts it is going from being the senior pastor to the pastor of seniors. Anybody here 60 plus excited for this, huh? Yeah, lots of hands going up there. And uh, so we're in this transition here, and, and uh, he's excited. I, I'm excited about it. There's just lots of great things happening here at the church. Uh, this is past Easter Sunday. We had over 3,000 people in church. And uh, and had over 3,000 people attend one of our Easter productions, one of the, the promises, uh, performances this uh, past couple of weeks, which is just awesome. Yeah, 3,000 people in church, 3,000 people in the productions. God's just doing uh, some amazing things. And thank you to everybody who made uh, this past week, again, the productions. Uh, we had an Easter choir that was up here. And just thank you to uh, each and every one that put in weeks, months uh, of time into, uh, into that. But... Uh, uh, but we are in this transition, and uh, Pastor Tim, about three weeks ago, he shared on his life verse, Psalm 119, 165, great peace, have, that, uh, have those that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And, and he shared on his life verse a few weeks ago, and so uh, what I wanted to do today is share uh, some thoughts from my life verse, if that's all right with you. Is that okay? A few of you here. So if you got your Bibles, you can go ahead, you can crack them open to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, where we read, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Would you pray with me here this morning? Father, we're thankful for these moments around your word. God, we pray uh, that you would just speak to our hearts in our lives here today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in the book of Galatians here, and in the uh, book of Galatians, the apostle Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, and he's writing to uh, address some false teaching that was happening in the church there. There were some uh, Judaizers, they were coming, and they were teaching that if you were going to be faithful uh, to God, that that required that uh, you practice certain things, like the, you, know, you had to dress a certain way, or you had to eat certain things, or you had to uh, do some of the certain ceremonies, and so Paul is writing to the 
the church in Galatia to talk about what it means to fully follow uh, Christ. What does it mean to really follow Christ? And he's addressing this teaching that he was very vehemently against that, you know, there were certain outward things that you had to do. Again, the way that you dressed or the, uh, the way that you ate or again, these, these practices, these ceremonies that you had to uh, perform. And, he, and he's telling the church in Galatia, what does it mean to really follow Christ? What does it look like if we're really following him? And here in verse 20, what we have is we have him using himself as an example. And he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And basically he's saying, if you're going to follow Christ, that you have to be crucified. But what does that mean to be crucified with Christ? Does that mean that we need to uh, go find some, some wood beams and construct a cross and uh, get, be crucified on the cross? I, I sure hope that that's not what that means. Does it mean that, you know, like Jesus was crucified with, you know, two thieves, one on each side of him? Does it mean to be crucified with Christ that we've got to, you know, somehow go back in time? You know, I, you know I, I don't know how we would do that. What does it mean to be crucified with Christ? Well, we know that it doesn't mean to actually be physically killed because what does Paul say? He says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, or I no longer live, but Christ lives in me and now the life that I live. This life that I live in the body, this life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. What does it mean to be crucified? Well, some might say to be crucified with Christ. Well, that means like identifying with Christ and, you know, calling my, uh, myself a Christian. You know, that, that, that's maybe the beginning of it, a part of it, but it's definitely not all of it. I mean, for me, uh, I would consider myself a, a Celtics fan at this point. I would identify as a Celtics fan. Fan. I grew up in uh, the Midwest, uh, first 22 years of my life, you know, growing up in Illinois and, and in Missouri, and, and so I moved out here, and kind of crazy, I'm going to be 44 this year, so now half of my life is here, so my, my sports allegiances are, are slowly shifting to New England teams, but Missouri has no basketball, so the first team that uh, I probably started to call myself a fan of out here would have been the, the Celtics, and I would call myself a Celtics fan. I would identify as a Celtics fan. But the reality is, is that being a Celtics fan, it doesn't really impact my life at all. I don't have a Celtics jersey. I don't have a Celtics uh, shirt. I don't have a Celtics hat. Uh, my son, my oldest son, 16, Jack, he, he loves basketball, so we, we might turn on the, uh, the basketball game and, and watch a game here and there, and uh, we even had the privilege to go into one of the games this, uh, this year, and, and it was great to be there with him, but you know, I, I would call myself a, a Celtics fan if, I, if, if I'm any fan at all of any basketball team, but that doesn't really change who I am. I, 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 even though I identify as a I'm still the same person. It doesn't really impact my life at all. And what Paul is talking about here is that uh, if we're going to follow Christ, if we're going to be crucified with Christ, it's more than just identifying or calling ourselves a Christian. He actually put it this way. The Apostle Paul writing in Philippians chapter 3, he said, I want to know Christ, yes, know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Becoming like like him. See, a part of uh, this being crucified with Christ is laying down our, our life and becoming more like him. It's like every Tuesday night here at the church, we have a group called Celebrate Recovery. It meets right here in the building, 90, 100 people or so. Uh, they come out and they, they say that they have something in their life that is not like Christ. There's a hurt, there's a habit, there's some kind of hang up that's not like Jesus and they're coming to celebrate recovery, saying, I want to lay this down. I want, to, I want to get the help that I need. I want to get the accountability that I need so that I can put this thing to death so that I can crucify this thing and I can become more like Jesus. So every Tuesday, there's individuals that come, and some of them come because they have an addiction. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's some kind of chemical addiction. So they come, and again, they find the accountability that they need, and, and they say, I want to put this thing to death, and I want to become more like Jesus. Or there's some who come on a, a Tuesday night, and they have anxiety or, or depression or, or anger, and, and they know that that's not like uh, that's not how they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. And so they're, they're coming and they're saying, you know, I, I want to put myself around people who are going to help me be more like 
Christ. And so they, they come on a Tuesday and say, I want to put this to death so that I can, I want to crucify this so that I can be more like Jesus. That's, that's a part of it is becoming like him, uh, allowing him to put those things to death in our life so that we can be more like him. The Apostle Paul, he would write it this way in Romans chapter 12. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. To offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Again, being willing to let God put those things to death in our life so that we can become more like him. And I think that there's some here today that, you know, if we're, gonna, if we're going to live out Galatians chapter 2, if we're going to be crucified with Christ, we have to be willing to allow him to put to death those things in our life that are not like him. And maybe that's like some of our friends on, on Tuesday night. Maybe there's some addiction. There's something in our, our life that we've been holding on to. That we've been making some excuses for uh, not addressing and, and we've been unwilling to give up and, and we need to come on a Tuesday night and say, God, whatever this addiction is, I, I, wanna, I want you to put this to death so that I can be more like you. I think there's some people here that, you know, we say we want to honor God in every aspect of our lives. We want to honor God with our, with our time and we want to honor God with our abilities and we want to honor God in every aspect of our lives. But, you know, maybe there's that one area that we're holding back. Maybe something like finances. And we want to trust God in every area of our life, but when it, but when it comes to, to giving, when it comes to being generous, when it comes to being good stewards of our finances, we hold back. Or even, since it's April 7th here, when it comes to paying our taxes. Eight days away here. You know, we want to honor God and, and do everything the way that he wants to do, but when it comes to doing our taxes, you know, we forget to claim some income or write off some things we shouldn't write off. You know, there's these areas of our life that we just kind of don't do what he wants us to do. Maybe it's relationships. We say, God, I want to I honor you. I want to put you first place in my life. I want to honor you with every area of my life. But, oh, God, please just don't make me give up that relationship. Don't make me give up that. Even though I know that he's not the God, don't make me give that up. You know, maybe it's habits. Maybe it's uh, finances. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's it's, it's grudging. There's just these areas of our life. And what Christ is saying here, what God is saying here in Galatians chapter 2 is that we have to be willing to put these things to death so that we can follow him. The life that I now live in the body, I, I live by faith in the son of God. I want to know Christ. Offer our bodies as living sacrifices. See, God wants us to put these things to death and, and to leave them behind and follow him with all of our life. The problem for so many of us is that we're unwilling to let those things go. There's a great movie back in the 1980s. Let me actually take that sentence back. There's a movie in the 1980s. I don't know that I want to call it great, but uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Anybody ever seen Weekend at Bernie's? If you've ever seen Weekend at Bernie's, <clears throat> without getting into the plot too much here, there's these two guys, they think that they're up for a promotion, and they go in to uh, meet their boss, and they find out that their boss is dead. And so for the longest of time, they, because of their own selfish reasons, they uh, try to pretend that their boss is alive. So they take him along with them wherever they go, the beach, the boat, uh, then the car, at the pool, you know. They're just lugging this dead guy around with them wherever they go. And it's this huge inconvenience, but you know, throughout the whole movie. But for a lot of us, that's kind of a picture of our life. We have these things that God wants us to put to death and to leave behind, but we're just unwilling to let it go. And we keep carrying this dead weight with us wherever we, we go. And what Galatians chapter 2 is saying is that I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live 
The life that I live in this, this flesh, this body, I live by faith in the Son of God. I'm going to let all of that go, and I'm going to let all my hurts and all my habits, all my hang-ups, I'm going to let all those things go that are not like Christ, and I'm going to follow him with everything that's inside of me. And that is a, that's a daily crucifixion. That's a, a daily commitment. You know, I think that there's a lot of people who they feel like, you know, I've come to Christ, I've done what I, I need to do, but the reality is, is that we're to daily offer our lives to him. The problem is when we talk about living sacrifices, well, one author put it this way, he said, the problem with living sacrifices is they keep trying to climb off of the altar. You know, I think there's some of us, maybe we, you know, we came to Christ, you know, uh, a long time ago, we made that commitment, and, and, and somewhere along the way, we, we kind of got off track. We stopped offering that, that our, our, ourselves to God daily, we stopped offering ourselves to Christ daily. Yeah, we made a commitment a long time ago, but, you know, maybe there was some you know, person that came into our life, and again, we knew that they weren't, uh, they weren't going to pull us in the right direction, but we, you know, we started a relationship with them, and they, and they ended up getting us off track. We got up off of the altar. Or maybe for other people, it was, we, we, we said we were going to follow Christ, and then we got a promotion or, or something at, at work, and again, we just, Christ started becoming less and less of a priority. We, we kind of got up off of that, that altar, Maybe it was a problem in our life that distracted us from God. I don't know what it was. But we made a commitment that we were going to follow God, but then that we were going to live our lives for him. We, 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 we said, my life is yours, God. I, I want to be crucified with you. But then we got up off of the altar and stopped offering that daily sacrifice. You know, last week was Easter. And the question really of Easter is, did Christ die for me? Did Christ die for us? You know, that's, that's the Easter question. The question in Galatians 2 is not, did Christ die for us, but have I died for Christ? Am I willing to sacrifice my life? Am I willing to give up my, my hopes, my dreams, my desires? Because it's not just about giving up the, the, the negative things, the bad things, the sin in our lives, to fully follow Christ. No, it's, it's about giving our entire life to him. It's kind of like, if you can see it here, it's kind of like this little seed. Pretty small here. And this seed by itself really can't do much. Here on the table, nothing is, is going to happen. It's going to sit there, and I don't know what happens to seeds after they sit there for so long, die, whatever, but but if you take this same seed and you, and you put it inside some soil and you bury it and then you give it all of the right ingredients, all the right resources, the right amount of water and sunlight, whatever, it'll grow to be a beautiful plant. Actually, I think these are green beans, but um, <laughs> they'll grow to be great green, green beans in there, I guess. I don't know. But it takes this having the right environment for that to happen. And if our life is kind of like this, this green bean here, outside of the right environment, outside of Christ, it really doesn't do a whole lot, does it? There's some verses like in the Old Testament talking about chaff, but it says, you know, just kind of left to its own. It's kind of knocked around. It's blown around by the wind. It's, uh, nothing really great happens with it. But if you take it and you, you plant it, Talks about being planted uh, in the right environment by the right stream, being planted in God, being planted in Christ. If you plant it, if we're planted in Him, what happens? It allows us to grow, to be something that we could never be on our own. And a part of Galatians is saying, not only do I, I'm going to give up the negative parts, but it's saying, God, I'm going to give up every part of my life. I'm going to be planted in you, and I'm going to allow you to do whatever you want to do in my life life. There was a gentleman I, I knew some years ago who was a bit older than me, but uh, he was a tremendous basketball player in college. He's one of these giant, he's like six, 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 seven, whatever he was, great, 
great basketball player, played basketball in college, and, and uh, he was so good, in fact, that when he was getting ready to graduate, he took a phone call from a scout for an NBA team. And most 22-year-olds, if you got a phone call from a scout from an NBA team, you get pretty excited. You're like, tell me what plane to get on, tell me where to show up, I'm ready to go. Um, but he took that phone call and he, and he paused for a bit, you know, and the scout says, are you, are you in? And he had a one-word response, no. Because he knew that God had called him to do something else. That God had called him to be a pastor. Again, most 22-year-olds, they get a call like that. That's a tough decision. But for him, he, he was willing to crucify his life, to give up his hopes and dreams, as good as they were, to give up his hopes and dreams to do something bigger, do something that God had called him to do. Or maybe to make it a little closer to home, uh, there's a young woman here at the church named Elisama. She's actually on our church staff now. And Elisama grew up, uh, was valedictorian of her high school class. Uh, started engineering school, really just kind of writing her own ticket. Long story short, has begun to feel that God's started to call her to full-time missions. And she spent six months in Greece last year just kind of exploring this call. And, and now she's on our church staff, getting some experience on a church staff and and uh, she's taking Pathways, which is our Assemblies of God pathway uh, towards ministerial credentials and, and, uh, and is beginning to follow this calling that God has on her life. In fact, with her, most of the employees here at the church, actually nobody has a, a contract. We actually, with her, she has a one paragraph contract and it's probably different than any other contract you've ever seen in your, in your life. Most contracts guarantee that you have a job for a certain amount of time or guarantees the, uh, you know, the company that you're going to work there for a certain amount of time. Her contract's one paragraph, and it just says that she understands that she's called to be a full-time missionary, that she can only work it to the church until May 1st, 2027. She can quit anytime she wants before then, but if she hasn't quit by then, she's fired. Uh, because she knows that she's supposed to be a full-time missionary, and we don't want her getting comfortable here. We want her to do what God's called her to do. Or actually, that paragraph might be for me, to keep her from staying here longer than she should stay. But she knows that that's what she's supposed to be doing, following God, missions. You know, I wonder how many of us would sign something like that that says, God, I know that you've called me to do something, and I'm not going to let anything get in between me and what you've called me to do. In fact, I imagine that maybe there's some of us here that know that God's called us to do something and we've kept on doing our own thing instead. And I'm not saying that every person should be a pastor or a missionary. Maybe there's some who are here today, you know, you, a long time ago you had a conversation with God about your business and you said, God, you know, I, I believe you call me to be a businessman or a businesswoman and I'm going to do my best for you and when I reach a certain level or whatever, I'm going to start giving back, you know, or I'm going to do this or that, and, you know, and we got to that level and rather than giving back, we just kind of kept buying stuff for ourselves, maybe stuff we didn't need. Or maybe there's some here, you're at a teacher, and maybe you're in a, a good school district, and, and you've been sensing God's called you to maybe go to a different school district that, you know, maybe doesn't have as many resources, maybe it has uh, more problems, but you just feel like you're supposed to go and serve somewhere, but you just haven't pulled the trigger yet on that. Or maybe there's some that are a lawyer or whatever here, and you know that you, you, you're supposed to change, uh, you know, change companies, change group, whatever, to go, and, but you just let You've just let God and what he has for you, you've left it in the rear view mirror. Rather than following God's plan and, you know, and going God's way, you've just kind of kept going down your own route. I think that there's probably some who are here today that you know, God's called you to do something, to lay it down, to, 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 to cruci crucify, your, but you've, you've been holding back. You see, as the worship team comes, I believe, and I need everybody to pay attention here because I'm about to say it could be misunderstood a bit, but 
You see, every once in a while you'll hear somebody say, what does it take to be a Christian? Well, all you have to do is believe. And that's technically true if it's explained correctly. To be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, all we have to do is believe. Confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. That's it. But I think what Paul's saying here in Galatians 2 is, yeah, that, that's true, but there's a whole lot more to following Jesus. You see, following Jesus is not just about identifying with him. It's not about just saying, I'm a Christian. Following Jesus, it's even what Paul was addressing here in, Gal in Galatians, it's about more than just the outward appearance. It's about more than what we wear, what we eat, or, you know, whatever. No, following Jesus is about being willing to lay down our life for him, to be crucified with him. Yes, to give up those bad things that in our lives, those sins, those things that are keeping us from him, being willing even to lay down the good things in our life, our hopes, our dreams, so that we can faithfully follow him. Every once in a while, you'll hear somebody say, you know, comment or talk on the idea of, you know, don't waste your life. Even as a parent, you know, you've said to your kid, don't waste your life. Or you even said to yourself, I don't want to waste my life. There's even a good book years ago by a great pastor called Don't Waste Your Life. That is a good book that everybody should read. And it's a book on, you know, faithfully following Christ and not being concerned about consumerism and the things of this world, but, you know, giving your life and sacrificing for Christ. It's a great book, but, you know, this idea of don't waste your life, I think it actually misses the mark just a little bit. Because what Galatians 2 is saying is that we lay down our life, that we crucify our life. And the life that we live today, it's not really our life. We live for him. It's really his life. So when we talk about not wasting our life, it's really about don't, not wasting Christ's life and what he wants to do in and through us. And so today for us here, Galatians 2 is a reminder Again, about not wasting what God wants to do, what Christ wants to do in and through us. And maybe you're here and there is something in your life. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. But there's something in your life that you, you know you've been holding on to. You've been unwilling to lay down. Galatians, we need to crucify that. We need to lay that down. Or maybe there's been some hopes and some dreams that you've had. That, and if you're on, they're just your hopes. They're, they're your, but God's calling you to do something even greater. Are we willing to lay down what we want so that we can do all that God's called us to do? That's a part of what Galatians 2 is all about. It's not about just calling ourselves a Christian. It's not about just falling. It's about being willing to lay down our entire life for him and follow him daily. Not just a one-time decision, but to daily follow him. Would you pray with me? Father, we're grateful for these moments around your word. Lord, we're thankful for all that this passage says to us. But Lord, it is a reminder that you want all of our heart. You want all of our life. Lord, you want us to be wholly committed to you. To the point, God, where we would lay down, where we would crucify our life. Like the Apostle Paul said, I crucify my life. So I'm crucify with Christ so that I can fully live and we can fully be, God, all that you've called.